the derivative of a function f evaluated at x equals x naught is the instantaneous rate of change of the function at x equals x naught or we could also call it the slope of the tangent line of the graph of f at x equals x naught if we draw the graph of f and draw a tangent line at x equals x naught and wrote the equation for the tangent line as y equals mx plus b then this number m is the slope of the tangent line so this m is exactly the derivative of f evaluated at x equals x naught the way we actually define the derivative is through a limit we look at the slope of a secant line from let's say x naught and x one and the slope of the secant line is the change in f, so that's f of x1 minus f of x0, divided by the change in x, which is x1 minus x0. So this would be a slope of a secant line, but then we take the limit as x1 goes to x0, as these two points get closer and closer together. Equivalently, we could write the slope of the secant line as being from the point x0 plus delta x to the point x0, so calling x1 x0 plus delta x. Then the change in x is simply delta x. And we let the change go all the way towards 0. So take the limit as delta x goes to 0. So these things are all the same. Of course, the derivative depends on the point x0. If we evaluated the derivative over here, we would get a very different tangent line with a very different slope. And hence, the derivative could depend on the point at which we evaluate it. So our notation for the derivative should take into account the fact that it depends on the point. And we can denote the derivative in different ways. One is to denote it by df dx and we evaluate it at some point, let's say x equals x naught, or we might write it as df dx, and then put the argument x naught in parentheses. Or we could use a completely different notation and call it f prime of x naught. Again, these three notations are all the same thing. They all mean the derivative of f evaluated at the point x equals x naught. So they're all the slope of the tangent line there. They all are just a single number. The derivative at a single point, no matter how we denote it, is just a single number. It's the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change. But this single number depends on the value x naught. Sometimes we want to view the derivative as a function and then we'll usually write it as a function of just x rather than x naught because it seems simpler. We might write the derivative as df dx, thinking of it as a function of x, or we could write the argument explicitly and call it df dx of x, or using the prime notation, we'd write it as f prime of x. So here we're thinking of evaluating the slope at the value x, and then looking how the slope changes as you make x larger or smaller. Again, for each value of x, you get a single number, that slope, but of course that slope changes as you change x. For now, let's use this f prime notation. So we think of f prime of x as a function with input x and whose output is the slope of f at x. So the slope of f is the slope of the tangent line of f at the point x. Let's see if we can get some intuition in how this function behaves. So one way to view the derivative f prime of x is as a function that gives the slope of another function f at the point x. Let's try to get some intuition about what f prime of x is like by looking at some simple examples. Let's think of what happens when f is a linear function. In this case, how does the slope with the tangent line change as we change the point at which we evaluate the tangent line? 
Well, no matter at what point we calculate the tangent line, the tangent line is always going to be the same thing. It'll be the same as the function f of x, since f is linear. This means the slope of f does not depend on the point x. So let's imagine I evaluate the derivative at this point right here, x. Well, the slope of f is, let's say it's a half. So the value of the derivative here must be 1 half. So let's say this is a half. If I were to plot f prime of x, it would have to be 1 half right here. But of course it would have to be 1 half over here too, because the slope is 1 half, and it would have to be a half over here. No matter where I evaluate the derivative, I would always get 1 half, because that's the slope of this line. And so the derivative f prime of f would just be a constant function. If I were to look at the derivative of another linear function, again it would have to be constant, but this time since this function is steeper, it would be a larger value, let's say 1. So f prime of x would just be equal to 1. On the other hand, if I had a decreasing function f, then its slope would be negative, so f prime of x would have to be a negative function. What if I had a function that started off looking linear, but then it abruptly changed to another linear function. We call such a function piecewise linear. Over at the left, this function has a positive slope, so its derivative should be some positive number. Over at the right, the function is decreasing. It has a negative slope, so its derivative should be a negative number. The derivative is constant at the left and constant at the right, but the slope changes abruptly in the middle. In fact, the derivative isn't defined here as there is no tangent line at this point. So although the derivative isn't defined at such corners, it can be helpful to look at piecewise linear functions to gain some intuition of what the derivative is like. This applet allows you to explore the derivative of a piecewise linear function and develop some intuition about how the derivative works. The function f of x is plotted by this blue line and its derivative f prime of x is plotted by the green line segments. Since the function f of x is piecewise linear, its derivative is constant on each of these pieces. Over at the left, f is increasing slightly, so f prime of x is a small positive number. Then it picks up its speed and increases a lot faster, so f prime of x over this part is a larger positive number. Here in the middle, f is constant, so its slope is zero, and f prime, the derivative, is zero in this region. Then the slope becomes negative, so we have a negative derivative, and then it becomes positive again. You can change the function f by dragging up and down on the blue circles, and you can see that the value of the derivative changes correspondingly. Whenever I drag one of these blue points, I increase the slope on one side and decrease it on the other, so you always have one segment going up while the other segment goes down. If you grab one of these red points in the middle of a line segment, this line segment stays with the same slope, so you notice that f prime of x in that region is unchanged, but the neighboring slopes change. You can use this applet to test how well you understand how the derivative works. For example, we can hide the derivative and change the function f, and then see if you can figure out what the derivative should look like. Once you've formulated your guess, you can click the Show Derivative button again and see how well you did. For this example, the only tricky part was this region here, where the slope started being very negative and then slowly increased, ending up with a large positive slope over here. Here's another applet you can use to test out how well you understand the derivative. In this case, f of x in blue is a polynomial, so its derivative f prime of x in green is also a smooth function. Again, as before, you can drag the blue points up and down to change the function and watch what happens to the derivative. We can also show a tangent line by clicking this box, and now we can drag this red point and see the tangent line at different points along the graph of f. For example, right here, we can see that the slope is close to zero, negative 0.8. Indeed, the graph of the derivative is a small negative number right here. Here's where the graph has the steepest negative slope, 
and indeed the derivative is large and negative over here. Way over here, the slope is so large, in fact it's almost 20, that the graph of the derivative is cut off. Again, you can test yourself by hiding the derivative and changing the function. Can you guess what the derivative of this blue function will look like? The derivative should be large and negative over here, get closer and closer to zero, hit zero right here, and then become positive, reach its maximum positive value somewhere around here, and then the derivative will get smaller again, hit zero right around here, and become negative. Let's see what the graph looks like. Indeed, it's negative, becomes zero right here, positive from here to here, and negative over here. If you'd like to work with functions for which you have a formula, you can use a third applet on this page. Or you can type in a function. The function is plotted in blue. Its derivative, again, is in green. And the position of the tangent line can be changed by dragging this red diamond so you can visualize how the slope of the function itself translates into the derivative, f prime. Here the slope is about 4. Indeed, the derivative is about 4 here. You can type in different functions for f and see if you can figure out what the derivative will look like. For this function, can you visualize what the derivative would look like? Can you see where it would be positive, negative, and where it would be at its steepest points? Well, I'll let you think about that for a little while. You can go to the applet, type this function in, and see what the derivative looks like. At the bottom of this page, there's also a link to a Khan Academy exercise where you can try to form the graph of the derivative by moving these points up and down to match the slope of the function. You can also watch a Khan Academy video on the intuition behind the derivative. By exploring the applets on this page or this Khan Academy exercise, we hope that you can get a good sense for how the derivative works and develop intuition into its meaning.